Welcome, brothers. I'd like to uh, send you greetings this evening from the Grand Lodge of Minnesota and Leadership Committee to be hosting this evening's webinar series. Tonight will be uh, Build a Better Beehive. This presentation will be about the stewards. A couple of protocol items, brothers. Remember, this is not a tiled meeting, so please govern yourselves accordingly. Things that uh, should not be discussed here should be left there with inside. You. These sessions are being recorded. Uh, please keep yourself on mute during the presentation. We will have an open section during the end for questions and answers. The poll will begin shortly after the presentation is done. I'll run that for approximately five minutes, shut that down, and uh, we'll let the recording run to the end. Also, you can inquire about these uh, um, webinars, or you can find them in the archives in under Grand Lodge, if you go down into the webinars, you'll find that there are, they are archived there. So this evening, we uh, will have the stewards, and then you'll see we'll take a break for next week to enjoy the holidays. Holidays. Outside of that, we'll come back, have the chaplain, followed with the deacon and Leo, a break for uh, Christmas, and then the secretary, treasurer, and junior warden as we look to into 2021. Please keep in mind, we have the Grand Lodge initiative of the show and tell challenge being sent out to uh, brothers of various lodges. You know, if you have uh, some questions or looking for more understanding, you can look into bythecompass.org, reach out to uh, any of the committee members. They have some uh, additional information, but looking for any type of uh, mirror of your lodge, a look into how masonry is in your town, your local lodge and with your brothers how you'd like to share that uh, entirely up to your lodge, but many great ideas, you know, some key questions, you know, what is the life and legacy of about Freemason say? And how has the craft rewarded you? And, you know, what is Freemasonry? What does it mean in your area? So please reach out if you need any more understanding to how that is. With that, I'd like to turn this over and allow the uh, Worshipful Brothers, Sean, and Brad to give their presentation. Just waiting for him to queue up the first slide and then we'll get started. Uh, good evening, brothers. And thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Sean Carrick. I am a past master of both Montgomery Lodge and Red Wing Lodge. And I'm the current senior grand steward. And with me is worshipful Brad, brother, Brad Phelps. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Brad Phelps, the district rep for District 28, past master of Rochester as well as Castle Manorville. We'd like to start by drawing your attention to the wheel located on the left of the screen. The outer ring will represent those virtues of our fraternity. The spoke is each officer of the lodge and our lodge brother should be ever be at the center. It is to show that as all these virtues are valuable within our lodge, lodge's harmony, each officer's need represents only a few of them. So we will attempt to explain how your duties in the lodge drive harmony to the beehive, a symbol of cooperative work. You know, Sean, one of my absolute favorite responsibilities while I was going through the line was that of Stuart. It was an opportunity for me to practice and hone my culinary skills. I got to surround myself with others that had similar interests. And what other job can I possibly hold where if I do my duties, I'm always greeted with a smile. And I remember a time when I was driving home from work one day. And I heard one of my favorite talk show hosts pose the question, what is stewardship? And I thought, what a great question, because stewardship is not something that we normally hear in modern language. And so I turned the volume up to listen in because, you know, masonry. And I thought his explanation was quite intriguing. He explained stewardship as uh, stewardship is managing our creator's blessing and our creator's glory. And in the Judeo-Christian tradition, it's the first assignment God gave to the human race in Genesis. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. 
And I remember that really striking me as, wow, the architect has placed tremendous trust in us. And so the question becomes, okay, that's really great. Uh, how does how is that applied to masonry? And we might get some clues if we look at the installation for the stewards. And I've highlighted some key words. Assist. Every brother is suitably provided for. First impression. Properly prepare them for dignified and important ceremonies. And so I got to thinking about an analogy that I've heard regarding people, and ironically, it's culinary as well. Um, the metaphor of an egg. And as candidates, we are entrusted into the lodge as something very new. And the lodge really has a decision to make. Uh, and of course, the candidate's first, first contact with the lodge is with the stewards. And as, as these new folks come in, we have the choice of overwhelming them, uh, asking them tremendous responsibility before we've built relationships and ultimately crack that egg for instant gratification. Or we can spend the time to, to nurture that egg, uh, keep it warm, give it, give it good instruction, uh, and hatch it into a productive and producing member of the lodge. And the stewards play a key role in that. But you know, it strikes me, Sean, you have much more recent experience in stewardship, being that you're currently the uh, uh, one of the grand stewards. So what else can you tell us about the stewards? So on this slide, you're gonna see the jewel apron and rod of the stewards. For both the senior and junior steward, they share the same jewel. A point of interest is that the stewards rods are used only when you're doing your degree work and receiving of the Grand Lodge officers where they go out and they'll do a formal reception. For the rest of the time, stewards rods basically remain in the holder. Uh, when we're preparing the candidate for important steps of initiation, those rods are a symbol of authority and it helps as we're preparing them for each step of their degrees. The cornucopia is the symbol of the steward. I really like that symbol. And it's a good reminder of abundance, right? Because through stewardship, there's an abundance of opportunity as well as gifts that the lodge can offer. And it's interesting to note that another name for the cornucopia is the horn of plenty. So as you can see from this image of the lodge, the stewards, which are highlighted in red, are seated next to the junior warden who is responsible for the hours of refreshment. For many lodges, they form a team to care for the members' nourishment. Also, the tradition of a progressive lodge line is dependent on the individual lodges. Uh, lodges have their own traditions with how officer lines are started, with some of them starting with the stewards, some with the tiler, and yet others start with the deacons. While working through each of the positions, you learn different skills. For stewards, being in charge of refreshment will enable you to build bonds with all the members that will become your chorus of help when you progress to the East. And of course, building bonds is extremely important. And it's no secret that we build great bonds while breaking bread. Sometimes a great icebreaker is humor. And to that point, we all like memes. And here's a funny meme that represents what many different viewpoints see stewardship as. Here we have a list of some of the duties for the stewards. And it sounds simple, but without being at lodge, how can you begin to understand how the lodge works? Please remember that the most important time for any lodge is not the lodge meeting per se, but rather the time before and after the meeting for fellowship with your brothers. Members should always be ready to assist, but officers should always look to help each other so that you learn the next position's role and requirements. Learning the next progressive step, steps of the duties and the lines for those positions as you progress upward, you may be asked to fill into higher positions. 
It also shows the brothers that you care about the lodge and are vested in the lodge. So as a steward, you would then be looking towards learning the role of the deacons. As a steward, you're in charge of food. Now this could, this is whether you be, are cooking it yourself or having it catered. Some lodges rotate who is bringing the meal and others have the stewards do the cooking and others coordinate a caterer to provide the food. Every lodge has its own expectations of this position, but one requirement should be with every steward greeting every brother. This is the start of building bonds you will need as you progress to the east. You may need to call on brothers to help you, and this becomes a lot easier if you've already established a relationship with the brothers before you have reached the east. For those lodges, when they're able, serving a meal or having the dessert afterward allows for time to continue the fellowship after lodge. As a steward, you can have a positive impact on lodge attendance through the use of food sometimes. As a mentor of mine told me, the meeting is fine, but the time before and after is so much better. Two desserts, please, was his common uh, asking for every time. You have the privilege and the honor of providing one of the first impressions of our institution as the senior and junior steward with the candidates during the degree. As the senior steward, you have the honor of providing the first lecture to the candidate by completing the interrogatories. This can be very meaningful to both you and the candidate and will set the mood for the degree. I admonish all to make it memorable, to cause a bigger impact for the candidate. One of the ways in which we can do this is by doing this in front of as many members as possible to increase the impact that they are making their first acknowledgments to the brothers of the lodge, not just simply a, an affirmation to start a show off. When preparing the candidate, conduct, conduct this in a dignified manner. Ensure that the proper attire is available. You may even want to have a short checklist to help make sure you have everything. It should be ready so that you are able to prepare the candidate for the dignified and important ceremony that they're about to receive. There really should be no horsing around or comments that can cause any additional nerves. We all have heard of the riding the goat. This may have happened when you went through the degrees, but we are better and we're working to become better men. Try not to cause a negative impact for the candidate. In subsequent degrees, make sure you've also given the candidate a refresher of information from the previous degrees that may be of importance to the degree they are going through. As the junior steward, you are assisting the senior steward in preparing the candidate and with the hospitalities for the lodge brethren. Attending of officers meetings is such an important function. It's gonna allow you to learn the process of running the lodge you belong to and that you're an officer in. You should be encouraged to provide feedback to the rest of the lodge team during these meetings. This will also allow you to see what the current officers are dealing with to maintain harmony in the lodge while allowing you for the growth as an officer without embarrassment in front of the lodge for topics that many of the brothers may have heard before, you can discuss in a small setting with your caring brothers and fellow officers. One of the benefits of being an officer is that many lodges have assigned lectures or degree cast parts for the different officer positions. This not only allows you to improve yourself by learning the lessons through presentation, but as you progress and you become master, it will allow you to assist in teaching others the different parts of our ritual work, making the degrees more meaningful and impactful, not only to the candidate, but also to the membership and attendance. You always need to remember that we're traveling down a road of self-improvement that takes time and truly understanding all the lessons of the degrees and how they impact you personally can take a lifetime. We are indeed taught to continually improve ourselves, and the architect provides us what we need along the journey, including each other as companions. 
leadership is a choice and it's about listening to others and helping them in ways that we're able. The architect, trust, the architect trusts us uh, with what he lends us and the leadership concept really begins with stewardship. So this concludes our presentation and it's our hope that we've helped with understanding about how stewardship brings harmony to the lodge. There are many resources for those that are stewards or are considering taking the role of a steward. They include asking former stewards what they did or what was expected of them. There's also resources on the Grand Lodge website that are available for anyone. I highly recommend that as officers in your lodges or someone that is considering, please utilize those resources that are available to you so that the joy of the steward position can be fully experienced by you. And with that, we are curious if there's any questions for us. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, but my uh, my dogs upstairs took that opportunity to, to weigh in. So I'm gonna mute myself. Thank you for a great presentation, brothers. I realized I was just muted there. Um, I've launched the poll here. We'll let that run for a few minutes. Uh, brothers, is there any feedback or uh, questions that you may have directly for Brad or for Sean? I'd like to just say that uh, I've watched all of these so far and I've really enjoyed every single one of them. Uh, I've only been a member for six years. I am the secretary for uh, our Newport Lodge, and uh, every day is a learning day for me. Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I think it's interesting because I never was a steward. I kind of jumped in as senior deacon uh, when I started, so I kind of skipped that part. But uh, the whole interrogatories uh, at the beginning of the degree was something that was surprising to me that um, stewards had to know. Um, yeah, I, I never had to deal with that, so I wasn't aware of it. Doing the interrogatories for me is one of the most enjoyable experiences when I'm asked to do that for the for different lodges that I belong to. Um, we decided a, a, not too long ago after talking with some of the custodians that we would basically have as many brothers come and form a half semicircle around as the interrogatories are being provided because it really does set the mood that they're not just getting the show off, uh, starting the show off by answering a couple questions. They're making a commitment to the brothers there and they're gonna have to see those brothers as they're answering each of those questions. Um, I have asked a number of the, the uh, candidates that we've done that with what they thought of that impact and that was one of the most moving things that they realized that they were really setting on a new endeavor, uh, one to take serious. And this wasn't something as uh, I, one brother would say is light and trifling. I would like to say that I think the leadership committee did a heck of a job and thank you, Worship Brother Sean Carrick for assisting with the leadership committee and this report on these stewards. That's a very good job. Short, sweet, and brief, and to the point. <clears throat> that was very well, uh, very well put together and covered a lot of the key components. One of the things that uh, I've noticed and, and I've seen, and I'm, I'm hoping you guys, you brothers, will share some feedback on, is uh, seen a stewards fund. I know I've been and visited a couple of lodges that the brothers will put out a, um, a small collection plate, and they'll, they'll, what they'll do is they'll build up a, a brothers like an almoners fund or a, a relief fund that the master or the officers, key officers can use for brothers at times of hardship. And I always thought that was a really uh, inter interesting component that uh, you find within the Masonic Lodge as well as uh, you know, a, a, something that the lodges I had visited anyhow, I was a steward's uh, duty. 
I, I know that um, with One Lodge, the stewards did receive a fund, and at the end of the year, anything turned in went into the charity fund or to the scholarship funds. Um, I know that uh, during my time as the uh, senior steward for Montgomery Lodge, I ended up doing a lot of different dinners, and I kept asking for RSVPs, and getting uh, brothers to RSVP that they're going to be there for dinner is very difficult. Um, so what are the ways in which as a senior steward, we decided uh, we would uh, impress upon them the need to confirm that they were going to be there? We sent out a uh, email to every single brother saying, if you're going to be there for dinner on this Thursday, you need to RSVP. There is only going to be enough food for those that RSVP. We ended up at the St. Paul Masonic Center for Montgomery Lodge on the back dock for anyone that's familiar with it. We opened it up brought out a six foot long table, put a cloth uh, tablecloth down, brought out the fine china and had inch thick steaks, baked potatoes for the four of us that RSVP'd. And as everyone else that showed up came in, they asked, well, where else is, what else is there? And I, I told them, I had four RSVPs. There are four steaks, four baked potatoes and four su uh, servings of green beans. There is nothing else. And guys were shocked. The next week, I had 30 RSVPs, and we had spaghetti and meatballs. I did later on give them another, uh, I did uh, prime rib, uh, slow cooked in the oven, and uh, the last two guys that didn't RSVP ended up going back into the kitchen, and they picked the cutting board clean. So there are, as a senior steward, you do have some control there in getting guys to RSVP, but you have to get kind of unique with how you do it and make sure you have the master signed off on it also because it is still the master's lodge, but the master loved the idea. He was one of the four that did RSVP and it was a wonderful dinner. Oh, I'm sure it was. I love that Masonic tough love right there, Brother Terry. <laughs> no, that's interesting. Uh, you know, we've done a few of these uh, conferences and stuff and we tried an RSVP once and yeah, it, it just did not go well. So basically the next couple of times we did it, did it, we're saying, okay, no more RSVPs. We're just going to make enough and then leftovers we'll save for our dinners for the ne our next meals. But yeah, RSVPs are tough to get uh, here. Um, one other thing I thought was interesting in the presentation brought up too is knowing the deacon's parts. Uh, I think you briefly mentioned that in there. Um, you know, it's something that I try to impress a lot is, you know, always be ready to step up. You know, one person is missing for a meeting. You know, we usually bump people up um, and always be ready for that. Especially with the appointed positions, you always want to get the past masters involved that are there, but with the appointed positions, give the guys an opportunity to shine, especially if they've been working hard for it. If they don't know it and they would prefer not to, by all means, use your past masters, use, use others that, that can help you out, but try to empower the younger uh, officer line so that as they're progressing, they know that they have different options. It also sets the mood for them to learn because as the junior and senior wardens in the absence of the master you do take on additional duties and it's all about a progressive science even the uh, progressive line to tailgate on that i'd like to also add that uh junior and senior stewards is also a prelude to your junior and senior deacons you know in the pecking order of who's responsible and your responsibilities to your lodge and to your wardens and master and to the lodge again with the stewards. It's just a setting up, setting up for the progressive line. Principal Brother Larry, I believe you have your hand raised. I do. Um, just want to suggest that one of the things that sometimes is overlooked, uh, if your LEO doesn't happen to be available for a meeting, the interrogatories for that degree can be presented by your stewards as an LEO. And sometimes uh, people sitting on the sidelines may hold that degree, whether it's EA, fellow craft, or even master, but may not remember what the interrogatories were. 
and they can make for a very good LEO discussion. Uh, they are always timely and uh, certainly worth listening to a second and third time. Just as a suggestion. Great suggestion. Absolutely. And you bring up a great point because that is one of the reasons why we started adding the brothers out side of the lodge as a semicircle is because some of them had said it had been decades since they heard the questions and the first lecture and they really missed hearing that. And we figured out a way that keeping within the bounds of our ritual and with uh, not violating anything as far as the custodians were aware, we were able to do what we needed to do for the beginning of the degree, but also met the needs of our brothers that hadn't heard those in decades. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. More wisdom from Mr. Lenore. Any other questions or statements? Yeah, just a good job there, Sean. Uh, I love listening to, to these webinars. And once again, it's a good one. It was mostly Brad. He, he really took a leadership role in this and did a great job. So my hat off to Brad, uh, Worshipful Brother Brad, absolutely. Well, thank you, brother. You're too kind, but it was a good partnership. Good thank job, then. Yeah, great hey, presentation, hey, brother. Brad, ask about your audio setup. What? Uh, there's got to be a story <laughs> behind that because you come through sounding like it's a symphonic uh, vocal setup here. Uh, well, well, uh, brother, I, I uh, oh, and now I lost you. Are you there? Yep. What's yeah? What's the story behind the audio? Well, there's two things. One is I am a lead singer in a band as well as a hammer D operator. So both of those things contribute. And I've been trying to do video podcasts as well. Very cool. Yeah. Everybody so knows he learned it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy my time chatting with you, Kay. That is for sure. Good stuff. <laughs> I apologize for that. So I, I didn't uh, I didn't break in, but one of the things too that that I love that I know a lot of lodges do um, in the summertime, there's opportunities to gather your outdoor cooking friends. For me, that's Dutch oven cooking, but I know a lot of my friends like to do um, different types of of smoking and things of that nature. And in the past, we've done uh, gatherings where. We'll sample different things um, and put out a basket and most of the, the, the folks that are cooking donate that into the lodge. So that's kind of a fun event. Uh, you know, obviously right now things are a little bit different, but uh, when we when we get back to more normal, that's something that uh, everyone can think about and it's a lot of fun. You know, for the brothers that are still here, I'd also like to challenge each of you to try to get two or three of your lodge brothers to show up to the next of these uh, beehives. Uh, try to get the younger guys, but I, I challenge you. Let's see if we can really fill this up because there's a lot of guys out there that may consider becoming officers or may have been declining just because they really didn't understand it. And being you're here, you really are the leaders of the craft for your individual lodges. And hopefully we can get some more out there and not only get a nicer audience and answer questions, but just so we can share the information better among them. Yeah, definitely. I, I try and uh, send out reminders. Like today, I'll set, I sent out a reminder and stuff. Um, I know a lot of people have problems with, uh, you know, they have to wait till their kids go to bed or something before they can be focused on this. And they do the video archives, which you know, I should remind everybody as well um, of the archive videos if you missed one that you really want to see. But, yeah, definitely try and get the word out there. Yep, it's always been a tough factor to understand that, uh, you know, we do a lot of marketing, put a lot of stuff out. We've all seen it in our blue lodges, you know, the secretary or the the officers will send communications out and that's usually crickets, 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 so yeah. I want to appreciate everyone for being here. I've got just a couple of quick slides to share with you all before we uh, officially shut down the CD. 
you know, we have, uh, I want to wish everyone a, a happy Thanksgiving. I hope uh, for what that is for 2020 for, for years, your family, your brothers, and yours truly, that it's, uh, you find joy in what it is, you know, the grand architect will provide and we look to him. Coming back on the second, we'll enjoy uh, Worshipful Brother Jerry Oliver and Brad Phelps as they will give us a presentation on the chaplain. I know there's some great uh, stuff involved there. We'll be following that with some uh, additional duties as you see listed here. So, the, again, thank you all for uh, tuning in and witnessing. I mean, a, a great job, well put together, very well informed, and uh, you know, a round of applause to the, both of you brothers that. Uh, did a great job, so thank you much. If there's anything more, I'm gonna stop the recording.